some very impressive water temperature readings um, off the East Coast lately. Water temperatures in the low mid 80s, even as far north as New York City, and having water temperatures in the 80s. This is New York Harbor entrance buoy right here. Uh, currently, the water temperature there is 80.8 degrees. Yesterday, it hit 82 degrees. So very impressive water temperatures. Uh, this is east of Atlantic City, uh, Barnegat Light, water temperature in the upper 70s, hit 80 yesterday. This is, I believe, Little Egg Inlet, I believe. So, okay, they're not showing water temperature there. This is right off the coast, though, of Atlantic City. Okay, water temperature is 70 degrees. Hmm, that's, that's, the, that's the cold current that runs along the coast. However, if you go a little further to the west, I mean to the east, just a little further eastward, this is uh, another buoy, 82 degrees, all 80. So if a hurricane decided to come up the coast, it's not going to have any trouble keeping its strength. This is off the coast of Outer Banks. Water temperature there usually is 84 tops. It doesn't get any warmer than that. Yeah, 80, yeah that's a cold current. This is out to sea. This is closer to the Gulf Stream, which is usually in the mid-80s. So yeah, about normal. But this is what's really concerning. This buoy right here. Currently, they're registering 85. But yesterday, it registered almost 90 degrees. Registered almost 90 the other day, yesterday. 85.3. So This buoy off the coast of Florida, another one that's really been insane with water temperatures. 90, look at that. Yeah, if a hurricane passes over that, it's gonna blow up into Cat 5. And actually, this is showing a hurricane coming up, you know, forming in that area, basically. This is showing a cat high-end Category 4 hurricane. 129 knot winds. 135 knots. That is a very high-end Category 4 hurricane. You see 135 knots. That is a high-end Category 4 hurricane. Maybe even touching Cat 5. Yep, barely, you see, barely touching Category 5 strength. So, okay, now I'm going to go to 225. High-end Cat 4. Wait, whoa! That is a high-end Category 5. That's like 170 mile an hour winds. Oh my god. That is very impressive. That is a high-end Category 5 hurricane. I've never seen these kind of winds before. Incredible. 147 now winds. That is 170 mile an hour winds. Three hours later, guess what? Now it's 136. Still a Cat 5. Hour 240. Going to this eyewall replacement cycle. So now it's down to 131. But still... You know, now it's high in category four. So 12 hours later, it's, uh, weakening a little bit. 120, not, 121 knot winds off the coast of South Carolina. 140 mile an hour hurricane. So tw another 12 hours later, it's trying to go out to sea. The winds in New York are. Let's go to northeast, and this is basically what's going to translate into a pretty destructive hurricane. So this is going to take a little while to load. There. Wind's close to 70 miles an hour over New York City. Wow. You can see the eye, that's the eye right there. You see that 60? That's really low pressures. I mean, that's very, very low. That is like pressures in maybe the 940s. Oh, that's incredible. So these are going to be winds at 700 uh, in millibars. It's about 10,000 feet up. It's going up 10,000 feet. But it's pretty high up, though. That's going to be a major catastrophic hurricane. However, that is the 12Z run. I mean, the 6Z run. The, tw the latest run that I looked at 
showed a completely different track. Because this shows the storm missing the coast, missing us, but barely. It sh show see, shows the storm heading out to sea at the last moment. However, if this trough becomes negatively inverted, the storm could just go right into right into the coast. But the latest track I saw is even more frightening. It shows a potential catastrophic strike, and I'll show you where. It's passing just north of, uh, of Cuba, and then guess what? Right into the Gulf Coast, making landfall in Florida, just like Ivan did in 04. Going to almost due north. Uh, but see this big high pressure system, That's this powerful high pressure system is kind of going to protect us. Or if this high pressure system was just a little further to the northeast, the storm could just go up right over these incredibly water, warm water temperatures and head right into the coast. But why this is showing a, a storm going into the Gulf and not, up, and not up the coast? I'll show you why. I'm going to go to Atlantic now, and you will see why it's going further south and not further north. I'm going to show you the 800 millibar uh, readings, basically, just to give you a description why it's going to do that. This is Invest 99L right here. Right now, Invest 99L is nothing more than just this little, barely visible blob. You can see them very discom it's very discombobulated. But as it goes into the future, it's going to get a little more organized. You can even see see the pressure's dropping, 1470 now. And then look what's going to happen. Earlier, they were saying it was going to go north of Puerto Rico, north of Hispaniola. But now, it's going to go over Puerto Rico and over Hispaniola. That's going to weaken the storm, which will further cause it to go a little further to the south. Because, you know, a weaker storm always goes further south while a stronger storm gets carried north by the stronger steering currents. That will cause it to go into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially cause a major disaster there. Potential. Potential is definitely there. And you know, it's going to give a large part of the country a lot of rain, so... I mean, the best case scenario is actually this, the first storm where you have a Category 5 going like this and then going out to sea. However, the worst case scenario, the worst, the worst case scenario that I can imagine is a storm that's just going to go northwest like this over incredibly warm water temperatures and just go up the coast like that. That's the worst case scenario. That's going to involve New York City getting hit by a Category 3 hurricane because the water temperatures around New York City are incredibly warm. And by warm, I mean like 80s. I don't mean 70s. I mean 80s. So it's going to be incredibly warm water temperatures. And just one model that's showing the storm, you know, about what could happen potentially. So, I mean, there's a, a lot can change. So right now I'm going to go to SpaghettiModels.com to show you what is going on with Invest 99L. There is currently a pretty good chance of development from Invest 99L. Um, so Invest 99L is currently this blob of convection, which is about to f pop up on on the satellite. So okay, it's still loading. So I'm gonna show you Invest 99L. Well, basically that is it. It looks completely disorganized. So that's Invest 99L right there. Yeah, there, there's Invest 99L right now. You can already see some, some a pretty good swirl in there. See, it's already starting to get developed. That is Tropical Storm of Fiona right there. That's Fiona, and that will be Gaston. Gaston. Uh, that is a... Actually, a potential tropical wave trying to develop. It's actually in the middle of a high pressure system. So yeah, this thing could also try to develop, potentially, but there's no models hinting at it yet. But there's models hinting at this, definitely. This is a has a pretty good chance of developing, especially because it has a, you know, a mid-level and high, it has a mid-level circulation. It even has some surface, you know, it has a, a little bit of winds changing at the surface. So what I think is it will develop I think we'll take a track like this. I'm gonna go just north of Puerto Rico, probably clip to Kirk and, Kirks and Caicos in Bahamas, and then go up 
the East Coast like this. But it will say off the coast. So maybe grazing the Outer Banks and then grazing probably Nantucket. And because these very warm water temperatures, yes, we might get a pretty strong system. Well, thank you for watching and have a great day.